I can't imagine doing email without Gmail. I can't imagine collaborating on a presentation or on a design document by mailing around versions of content back and forth between people and saying, who's got the latest one, who's got what edit? And I can't imagine being tethered to one particular physical device to find my data and my applications. That would make no sense anymore. You know that. I know that. We all know that. Companies know that. Every company we talk to is trying to figure out, how can I shift my weight to the cloud? How can I use the web more heavily with the applications that I use and the applications that I build at work? The problem is, it's still hard to do that. It's still too hard to take advantage of the web at work. It's hard for a few reasons. First, it's hard because it takes too long. From you, the time you have a great idea, or your boss has a great idea, or the VP of marketing has a great request, from the time you have the great idea and you want to create a great application, new technology, new tools, it takes too long to turn that idea into reality. The second thing that's hard is we don't stand in one place anymore. That application that you're running, you might need to access it from the back of a taxi cab. Some of your users need to access it from an airport or from the lobby of their hotel. Because people are working everywhere, they're working all the time, the applications that you build for them need to run on all the devices that people are using. The third thing that's hard today is architectures tend to trap people so that the choice you make in what tool stack do I use, how am I building my application, that choice you make today locks you in to a deployment model for tomorrow that you may not be ready to lock yourself into. And then finally, if any of you have the job that this guy has, you look at this slide and probably say, ha, he's only got a half dozen applications he's taking care of for his company. The CIOs that we talk to tell us that they usually have on the order of 1,000 applications that they're trying to manage to run their business. And they need better tools to be able to manage all those applications. Well, over the next 40 minutes, we're going to show you what we've done working with other people to enable fast and familiar development using tools and languages you already know to crank out great web applications. We're going to show you how to make those applications mobile ready so they can run and reach your users wherever your users are. We're going to show you an architecture used based on open standards that gives you flexible deployment. So you have portability. You can choose how you want to build your apps, and you can choose where you want to deploy your apps separately. And finally, we'll show you some new tools that give you the ability to manage the hundreds and thousands of apps that are being built to run businesses in the cloud. Now, as we set out to do this, it was very important that we did this staying true to the principles and values of the web, the principles and values that you've heard all morning about how open standards lead to interoperability and portability, which leads to choice, and choice is what drives innovation. We looked for who can we work with, who can we collaborate with that shares those values, that understands the importance of standards enabling innovation, and that has spent years understanding how to help enterprise developers build great apps at work. And I'm very happy to announce that we've been working closely with VMware to enable exactly that, building on our complementary strengths to enable open standards to lead to great innovation in the enterprise. I'd like to welcome to the Google I.O. stage Paul Moritz, the president and CEO of VMware, to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing together. Good morning. It's a great pleasure to be with you here today. Uh, most of you will know VMware uh, in terms of the work that uh, we've been doing in uh, allowing existing applications to be iterated forward and take advantage of a cloud-oriented way of doing computing. Customers have huge investments in large bodies of existing applications that they can't walk away from. And just about the only hope for these applications is through virtualization, which allows you to kind of ca encapsulate these applications, jack them up, put them in a black box, slide new functionality in underneath them, and actually eventually start sliding the applications themselves around. So we've been doing a lot of work in this world of existing applications, allowing customers and companies to become more cloud-like in their internal operations and uh, actually allow them to start extending their data centers outside of their own physical premises into infrastructure uh, that they can rent from external service providers. And this is all well and good. It's very important work to be doing. 
But the question really becomes, what about new applications? And it's clear that there are going to be many clouds out there. Customers are going to build their clouds internally. Service providers are going to build clouds. Very large companies like Google are going to build clouds. And wouldn't it be great if we could have a way of writing applications that on the one hand can take full advantage of a particular cloud but also be portable across clouds? If you think of these infrastructure level clouds as kind of the new hardware, <laughs> What is the new operating system for the cloud? What is that layer of abstraction that's going to allow us to write applications that can look great on a variety of clouds? And it's our premise, as is Google's, that the new operating system is these extended frameworks. And uh, as you well know, developers over the last several years have by and large voted with their feet and traditionally uh, now work within frameworks that give them much higher levels of productivity. And uh, that's the reason last year we at VMware uh, acquired what we think is one of the best of breed new generation frameworks, the Spring Framework. Uh, this comes from work that was started in uh, uh, 2002 by Rod Johnson and others who founded Spring, uh, who had been working in the Java world, and had come to the conclusion it was just too hard to write Java and EJB applications. And uh, they evolved the Spring framework, which is oriented around a very simple, lightweight, but extremely powerful uh, object model. With the result is, is that more than half of the lines of new Java code being written today are written in the context of the Spring framework. They started that uh, effort based on open source. And they have continued in the open and open source tradition, and we're committed to continuing that. <laughs> and uh, so late last year, we started in-depth conversations with Google and said, wouldn't it be able to, great to give the world's largest body of developers, the Java community, a way of writing really efficient, great cloud-based applications? And as a result, we have been working with Google <laughs> to bring to bear what we know about writing the back end of great high performance portable applications with what Google has developed around the front end. Uh, a perfect marriage is to bring these two technologies together and give the industry an open, an open source layer to cloak the clouds, to allow you to get the fullest benefit from your investments. The one thing I've learned over the years is the more choice you give developers, the more promise you give to developers that they're going to be able to get a return on their investment by having the widest possible number of places that they can deploy this technology, the greater the motivation, the greater the applications that result. So we have had our two teams working together to really integrate the Spring Framework and the Google Web Toolkit. And now I'll give a complete answer as to how to write an end-to-end -end application, the back end and the front end, in a way that you can deliver really great, exciting apps that work across clouds, across devices, with a deep commitment to doing this in an open and open source fashion. <laughs> so with that, I'm uh, very happy to let you see some of the results of this work. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Paul. Been very excited to work with Paul. Been even more excited to have our engineers and Paul's engineers working together to deliver on exactly what he said. The first of the promises that we made is that over the next 40 minutes, we're going to show you how we can use familiar tools to enable fast development. And the way we've done that is we have, exactly as Paul said, integrated the Spring back-end development tools, which let Java developers build great back-ends to their apps, with the Google Web Toolkit front-end, so you get the power of HTML5 in a complete Java stack, back-end and front-end, integrated together. And to show you how that works, I'd like to bring up Ben Alex, who's the lead engineer for Spring Roo, and Bruce Johnson, who's the lead of the Google Web Toolkit team, to give you a demo of how do these tools actually work together, which you will be able to try yourself after the keynote.
Thank you, David. Um, so if you've used Google Web Toolkit before, uh, you know that GWT makes it easy to build rich web applications completely in Java. You know, not only the server-side code, which you've always been able to write in Java, but also the client-side, the Ajax code that runs in the browser. 